The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. It's wonderful to see you here in the sanctuary, and a special welcome to those joining us on the live stream today as well. Please check your cell phones and make sure they are silenced for our worship service. If you're joining us online, you can get a bulletin for this service at rlcmilford.com connect. Feel free to download that and sing along at home. In the bulletin, you'll see several announcements about our Christian Service Committee, our music ministries, and our women's group. So I invite you to look at those today. You're invited to stay after worship and connect with one another over fellowship and refreshments. We are also really excited to start our new members class. And this is for current members as well. It's a chance to come together, to learn those who have been learn about those who have been worshiping with us all throughout the pandemic. We're excited to welcome a new group of members to our church and get to know one another better. So feel free to stay after worship for that. It'll be in the fellowship hall. If you're joining us online, we also have a Zoom option, and the link for that Zoom Bible study, um, new members class, was in the constant contact this week. Thank you to Sandy Simmons, who's filling in for us today. Unfortunately, our music director, Gail Kelso, um, tested positive for COVID this week, so she is at home. Uh, please pray for Gail and for her speedy recovery. Thank you to everyone who helped out with Rex Bachelor's memorial service yesterday. Pat, his widow, and their family really appreciated all the support. Um, a special thanks to the fellowship committee who provided a luncheon after the service. If you're participating in our church life, we encourage you to take the step of financially supporting our mission here at Reformation. Of course, you know there's an offering plate in the narthex, and if you're joining us online, you can go to rlcmilford.com give to give a gift electronically. Your giving helps us to share the good news of Easter, the good news of the risen Christ with more and more people. One final announcement, you probably noticed our gorgeous quilt uh, for our senior Jaylee McDuff in the narthex today. If you're new to Reformation, you might not know that we have a tradition of giving a quilt from the congregation to our high school seniors. And it, the quilt always reflects their interests, their college, their current high school, and it's a way of wrapping them in the church's love as they go on to the next chapter of their lives. Now there's a way for you to participate in the quilt you can sign on the white panels. There are Sharpies there. Even if you don't know J.L.A. McDuff, please sign it and wish her well. You can share a favorite Bible verse or a blessing, and she will love receiving those and having those with her as she goes to college and beyond. So do take a moment and sign the quilt, please, after worship today. With that, we'll begin our service with the prelude. Please stand as you're able. We gather in the name of the God of life and love and hope, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, shine the light of your resurrected Son into our hearts so that we may be cleansed of all sin and fear, and be set free to glorify you, 
with lives that reflect your mercy and grace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But in the resurrection of Jesus, the Lord God has triumphed over sin with the power of forgiveness. In his love, there is pardon and healing for all. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another, so that we may receive mercy and our hearts may be made true. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again to set creation free from sin and death. He is the Lord of life and the giver of hope. His love triumphs over everything that would separate us from God or one another. And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, open our eyes to see his presence among us. Open our hearts to receive his forgiveness, grace, and love. Fill us with the hope and joy that you so abundantly offer, and show us how to follow our risen Lord all of our days. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we continue with the readings. A reading from Acts. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to, as, to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The word of the Lord. Then I looked, and the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders, they numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea and in the sea and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen and the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in, because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. 
This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt to go and do where, wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a quiet morning. The sun just rose. The sea is calm and still. Imagine that we're sitting there beside the water on that peaceful morning with the disciples and with Jesus. Listen to the water lapping against the shore. Breathe in the scent of the fire. Picture the disciples sitting in a circle. Imagine Jesus saying to you, like he said to his disciples, come and have breakfast. Then he hands you bread and fish to eat. What do you think it would have been like to sit around that campfire with the risen Jesus? Well, the word that comes to mind for me is savor. I would savor that moment with the risen Lord sitting so close that you could see the scars in his hands when he reached out with the bread, noticing the marks in his side as he leaned in to stir the fire. Jesus died on the cross, and now he was alive and eating breakfast with his closest friends. The risen Jesus could have done anything. He could have been anywhere in the world. But where did Jesus go? To the lakeshore. He went to where Peter and the other disciples were spending time as they tried to figure out what to do next. It's a blessing for you and me to have this time to sit in on this breakfast on the beach. After all, we are also Jesus' disciples. And now that Jesus has been raised from the dead, we're also facing a new beginning. Let's savor this time sitting around the fire with Jesus so we can hear our risen Lord's message to us. But before we get to Jesus' plans for you and me, let's look more closely at how the disciples were doing when Jesus revealed himself to them. They had already seen the risen Lord once in the locked room. A week later, Jesus showed himself to Thomas, who had doubted that the resurrection was even real. After seeing Jesus standing before them alive and restored, even after that, the disciples were still in shock. They knew that this was their beloved teacher and Lord, but Jesus had somehow changed. Their own lives had changed as a result of his resurrection. The disciples didn't know what to do next. So they went fishing. It was familiar and comforting to return to their boats after the upheaval of Jesus' cross and empty tomb. Their fishing trip was disappointing, though. After being out all night, the disciples sat in empty boats with empty nets. Just then, the sun started to rise. Daybreak came, and Jesus stood on the beach. But they didn't know yet that it was him. Children, you have no fish, have you? Jesus called out. Then he gave them directions for how to fish. They obeyed, and suddenly, to their surprise, the nets were filled with an abundant catch. In this moment, when darkness was turning into morning, when Jesus' advice 
the empty net started overflowing with fish. In this moment, one of Jesus' disciples realized who he was. He cried out, it is the Lord. Peter was so excited, he jumped into the water and swam back to shore. The others returned in the boat, weighed down by that great catch. Jesus' appearance on the beach, the amazing catch of fish, and the invitation to breakfast, all of that would have been enough to lift the disciples' spirits. The risen Jesus was back with them. He was feeding them again with fish and bread. They got to have another meal together and enjoy his fellowship. All of that was wonderful, but it wasn't everything that Jesus had planned for them that morning. He still had unfinished business with Peter. So after they had finished breakfast, Jesus turned his attention to his chief disciple. Back on the night of the Last Supper, as you recall, Peter had sworn he would lay down his life for his Lord. But just as Jesus predicted, when he was arrested and put on trial, Peter panicked, and he denied him three times instead. After this breakfast on the beach, Jesus asked Peter a question. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter didn't hesitate. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus asked him two more times if Peter loved him, and both times he answered, yes, you know that I love you. With each one of these questions, Jesus drew Peter back into their relationship. Each denial was canceled out by Peter's word of love. Jesus showed that he forgave his friend for abandoning him. Jesus reassured Peter that he still loved him as a gift of grace. This reconciliation was important for Peter's well-being, of course, but it was about more than restoring the status quo of their relationship. Did you notice how Jesus responded each time Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you? Jesus said the same thing in three different ways. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. The reconciliation between Jesus and Peter was twofold. Peter confessed his love, and then Jesus forgave Peter and gave him a new charge and a new mission. Jesus offers this dual gift of forgiveness and a new calling to you and me today as well. We also have been reconciled to our Lord Jesus. On the cross, he took on our sin and our denials, our betrayals and our disloyalty. In exchange, Jesus gave us forgiveness and redemption and new life and eternal life. Jesus is alive, and we have been set free from sin and death forever. In, this, in these weeks after Easter, it's natural for us to wonder, so what happens next? What do we do with this great news that Jesus has been raised? How has this changed us? What does this mean for us? as we live out our days. To answer those questions, let's put ourselves back on that beach. Breathe in the morning air, the smoke of the fire, and the scent of the breakfast Jesus made for you. Feel the warmth of the rising sun on your back. Pause and savor this moment with our crucified and risen Lord. His last words to Peter are words for all of us to live by. They're not new words, but now that Jesus is alive, they are filled with new meaning. Jesus' words to Peter and to you and me are, follow me. In the light of the hope and freedom of Easter, how do you sense Jesus calling you to follow him? How is he leading you to take action, feed his lambs, and tend his sheep? You might bring in clothes for the Christian Service Committee's collection that's starting today for people in our community. You might follow Jesus by inviting your friends and family to our Vacation Bible School. You can follow your risen Lord by participating in our new members class and growing in your faith here at Reformation. You can also follow Jesus by reaching out to a friend that you haven't seen in a while to reconnect. You can follow Jesus by offering a word of encouragement to a young person in our church family, or in your own neighborhood. You all have many gifts and many different ways that Jesus is calling you to bless our church and our community with his love. 
as much as we would like to sit around the fire with Jesus forever. Eventually, the flames will die down, the sun will be high in the sky, and it will be time to go. As you rise from the circle of fire and fellowship to go and feed Jesus' sheep, remember that you carry the forgiveness and love of your risen Lord with you. The one who invited you to come and have breakfast empowers you to go and offer food to a hungry world. Go, follow Jesus, and share his abundant love and grace with everyone you meet. That is your Easter calling, and our faithful, loving, and life-giving God will help you do it. Amen. Together, let us confess the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the glory of Christ's resurrection, let us bring our needs and the needs of the world before the Lord who makes all things new. Almighty God, we praise you for the resurrection life and hope of Jesus. 
Help us pay attention to the ways Jesus calls us to serve our neighbors and offer the good news of your love with all people. Teach us to live out our faith as we follow Jesus. Show us how to use our gifts to bless others in his name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our world longs for your peace. As you have reconciled us to God through your cross and empty tomb, empower us to seek reconciliation with others. We ask for peace for all nations. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine. May the invasion cease. Deliver all men, women, and children of Ukraine from oppression and give them safety, comfort, and hope in the midst of struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, we thank you for blessing Reformation Lutheran Church with new friends in Christ. We pray for all those participating in our new members class. May they experience a strong sense of belonging as we share faith stories and learn more about each other. Empower all of us to be lifelong learners and strengthen us as disciples of Jesus and as a church community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, heal those who are ill with COVID-19. Protect those suffering persecution, especially in China. Fill us with your compassion and use your church to minister to the needs of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift before you now all those who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Lisa Kakamas, Barbara Seth, David, Keith Wilson, Todd French, Don Hanna, Kathy Hubbard, Donna Abel, Greg Waddington, Katie De Silva, Irene Ward, Corey Subjenski, Helene Reed, Pete Murphy, Johnny Lynn Jones, Patty Dolliver, Dickie Cooper, Diana Smith, Walter Donovan, Nanette Castle, and those whom we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of light and life, hear these and all our prayers, so that the world may be redeemed from sin and sorrow, and that all people may know your never-ending love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. If you're watching on the live stream or the recorded service and there are others with you, you can pause now and share a sign of peace with those, those that you're watching with. And for those of us here in the sanctuary, we do ask you to please stay in your pews. But you can greet those in your household with a sign of God's peace and then turn and wave to others in the sanctuary.
For those who are joining us on the live stream or the recorded service, we are glad that you are worshiping with us and we look forward to welcoming you again, either online or here in person sometime soon. At this point, we are going to bring the live stream to an end, so we want to say goodbye to our online worshipers and bless you to walk always in the light of the resurrected Christ. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God. <laughs>